Well, pip pip, tally tooting ho ho ho, Jules Guides here, in which I wander around London and tell you fascinating facts. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the videos. And today we're in Tooting. It's called Tooting Beck, presumably because of this church over here. That's St Anselm's Church, and that fella up there, I think, must be St Anselm. And back around the 11th century, there was uh, the Abbey du Bec Eloin, or something over in Normandy, was granted these grounds around here by William the Conqueror, because he came over in 1066 and set himself up as King of England. And so they sent old Mr Anselm over to go and take charge of this area here, and uh, eventually he became Archbishop of Canterbury and became a saint as well. I don't know, I think they're either Victorian or Edwardian, but you get these beautiful little kind of spots just hanging around. I mean, this old sign up here, this fellow was telling me that it was voted London's third best ghost sign, whatever that means. I don't know what the other two were. Megazones. Me Megazones. Megazones. Le cough healer. Oh, it's a cough medicine. It's still a pharmacy. I mean, yeah, I, and that's I, my... I wonder if anybody still goes in there and asking for Megazones. Yeah, we should go in. Excuse me, can I have some uh, Megazone tonic? <laughs> This street that we're going down, the one that goes from Tooting back down to Tooting Broadway, it used to be an old Roman road, uh, the Stain Street it was called, and it went all the way from London Bridge down to Chichester. So all along here you spot quite a lot of these kind of King Edward VII post boxes, because that's when mostly the whole area started to really develop, because when, when the tram started running from here, it was a good way to get into London from here. This building across the road here, from 1939, you can see the nice motif of King George VI. He was the current Queen's father. Anyway, this is the old telephone exchange where Paul Merton used to work. Paul Merton from Have I Got News For You, famous English comedian. He used to work there for quite a few years. Right opposite there, Beechcroft Road this is. Now, there was this fella called Peter Barr who was known as the Daffodil King who lived in Tooting and he had all these nurseries around here where he was, so, well, I mean, they've all been built on now, but uh, back in the 1860s, he was responsible for popularising the Daffodil. Anyway, there's a nice little reference to him up there at the corner of Beechcroft Road in case you're wondering what it is. And, um, and actually, at the end of Beechcroft Road, I'm not sure if I can really be bothered to go all the way up here, Simon, but uh, at the end of this road, is the Ernest Bevin College. That's where Sadiq Khan went, the London mayor. And lots of famous people went there. Jimmy White, a snooker player, one of my favourites, he went there. Mark Boland went there. Mark Boland lived in the area. And uh, Otis Dealey. I suppose you don't know who Otis Dealey is. No, I don't no, know. He's, he's a TV presenter. He was on a programme called Short Change. He does the gadget right. show. But anyway, the reason why I like him is because he was on exactly the same episode of Blind Date that I was on. I was one of the three choosing, but he was the one bloke choosing the three girls oh, in the I other, see, in the other half it. of the show. Anyway, so yeah. my, my Blind Date appearance is somewhere on YouTube, I think. Uh... Hey? Are you sure they're yours? <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you? Are you Simon Cathcart? Oh, how, what a lovely... Are you really Simon Cathcart? I'm the one and yeah. So, sorry about this. <laughs> it's been a lovely... I'm to disturb your taste. No, no, I thought, I thought you were just... I get a lot of people <laughs> shouting at me. Yeah, no, yeah. No, no, no. Carry on, I'll see you soon. I'll yeah, see you later. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Nice to meet you, Jules. Thanks. Bye. See you. Thank you. What a lovely surprise. One of my, oh, he designed my shoes, he designed my, my old cricket trousers I've got. Cathcart London on Instagram if you're interested. Along here, now between around sort of 72 to 68, are actually amongst the oldest in Tooting. They're kind of late 17th century, maybe early, early 18th century. But you can see where the, where the original house used to used to finish. There'd be a front door there before they stuck the yeah. fronts on. They're lovely, aren't they? Yeah, and just further along, this is, used to be the old sorting office. It's now a Sikh... How do you say it? <laughs> Gurudwara. <laughs> Gurudwara. I don't know. Oh, yeah, so look, look, built, yeah. look, 1903. You can see that that's when it was built. And the ah. unicorn, he's, they're supposed to be very dangerous creatures, I think. Uh, that's, why, that's why he's chained up. But Ooh. this poor fella, he's lost his horn. Doesn't look very dangerous to me. Must have fallen off. I do like the, the sort of ceramic glazed brickwork you get on many of the columns. And a lot of them are now just kind of sort of built over, but yeah, they, they, they're, they're there. Oh, another post box. Who's on this? Oh, yeah, George. George V, that one. But look, right next to there, I might be mistaken, I think this is where Jimmy White 
used to come and play. He used to bunk off school at the yeah. Ernest Berry in yeah, Carpet College. Sense, yeah. Yeah. He bunked off and he used to yeah, come yeah. down here. But it was called Zans, run by a whole bunch of these snooker clubs were run by a bloke called Ted Zanoncelli. This is where, I think it's where he met Tony Mio. And they used to go off around the country and sort of win money in little tournaments and stuff. I believe that's the one. What do you think this used to be, Simon? Well, it used to be a cinema by the looks of it. Can you just tell? How can you tell? So it's now the Tooting Islamic Centre. From the 1930s till about 1979, this was the Mayfair Cinema. Look at it. You can still see the remnants of the old style. I love big cinemas. Yeah. Big cinemas. Big one screen cinemas. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yes, look, I've spotted another one. Stink pipe, Simon. Stink pipe. See, once you spot them, you can't help seeing them all over the place. Look at the size of that, huh? Good piece of Victorian engineering, that. You get lots of them in South London. Sending f smelly fumes out into the sky. I wonder if you could light a match and set it on fire on the top. Excellent. Hello, sir. Hello. How much is it for a box? There are different, different price. Two kg is 12 pound. I think I'd better just get the smallest one there. There's only a limit to the amount of mangoes I can get, but apparently these mangoes are very much in season. And, and all the way along here, they've got, they've got quite a lot of people selling them, haven't they? It's quite a competition for who to go to for your mangoes. Thanks so much. See ya, have a good day. Puya, Puya. What's your name? These are from mostly where? It's predominantly Indian sweets and savouries. This is the flagship store. So this is where everything's made. And then we have uh, three more stores, which is in North London. Dalmas Cashews and Pistachios. Then you have the Kalakam, which is quite famous. So it's slight burpee, but it's more rich and creamy. Okay. We have the pistachio burpee. This is carrot halwa. Then you have uh, the cashews, which is pretty much like marzipan sweets, but they're made from cashews instead. I might see. Before you have sweet, it's usually good to have a bit of something spicy. Oh, yeah. Then you can uh, calm it down with a bit of sweet. One of us, it's most of the best sellers. Um, about like 25,000 a week. 25,000 a week they sell. Got a whole bunch of stuff here. So, okay, he said I have to have something spicy first. And that was a good smoke from. Do you want one? Yeah, I'll have a little bit. Oh, there they are. There they are. These are really good, Simon. You, you want to have one of these, but well, not yet. We haven't finished yet. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, this used to be a chapel. There's a lot of rumour that Daniel Defoe used to live in Tooting, around this area. And they say he used to hide out here. You know, he was one of these non-conformist dissenters. He didn't follow religion the same way that, you know, he was supposed to. Apparently, he was the first to organise all these non-conformists into a congregation here in Tooting. You know, he wrote this seditious pamphlet and ended up being put in the pillory in Fleet Street. And they came in, well, they were supposed to come and throw eggs and things at him, but actually they liked Daniel Defoe so much that they just came and threw flowers at him because <laughs> he had written Robinson Crusoe yeah, and he was yeah, very yes, popular. Yes. For example, the road opposite is Selkirk Road, named after Alexander Selkirk, who was marooned for four years on the island of Mazatierra or something off the coast of Chile. And that's what inspired Daniel Defoe to write Robinson Crusoe. This is a very famous pub across the road. Pity it's all covered in scaffolding. That's the Castle Pub. It's all very posh inside now. But uh, in the old days, Eric Clapton, Mott the Hoople, the Faces, um, they all played there. And status quo, because of the low ceiling in there, yeah. they say that that's where they developed their stooping style, you know? Oh, the quo yeah. with their two chords. <laughs> da, 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 da. They played like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. But apparently that's because of the low ceiling they had in there. There was a band called Girl School, it's a heavy metal girl band. Um, they used to play in there as well. They had a weekly residence and they, they later went on to support Motorhead. And Lemmy said that Kelly Johnson, the lead singer, was as good a guitarist as, as he had ever seen. Lemmy was, uh, made some classic remarks. He said, he said oh, summer of 71. Was like, that was a great time. I can't remember it, but I'll never forget it. <laughs> I've got this general obsession with stink pipes and stuff. But this actually serves several different purposes. Not only is it like got this lovely, what do you call that? A candelabra? I don't know, when, when you've got all those different lamps on there. 
but it it's also doubles up as a, as a street sign. So you've got these lovely old street signs on there. Croydon, London, Wandsworth to Wimbledon. And then it's also acts as ventilation. It was either from the sewers or from the toilet or from the underground. It's, uh, it's providing ventilation. Power to the people! Older viewers will remember uh, Citizen Smith from the 1970s. You remember that time? Yes, it's okay, a Wolfie yeah, Smith, played by Robert Lindsay, who was a kind of a, a Marxist sort of, he was, he was trying to start the revolution from Tooting. Freedom for Tooting! Do you often get a lot of people shouting power to the people? Yeah, you? especially on a Saturday afternoon when the football starts and they all come out of the tube and they've all had maybe one or two. They don't come from this area, but they, they do remember the show. <laughs> and they do walk out and they give it that. Power to the people! <laughs> Are you one of the great train robbers? No, my uh, uncle was. Oh, was he all right? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> Excellent. So we're going to come and meet my friend Jeff Simmons, who's an expert in tooting, gives tours and everything. Jeff, lovely to see you. Hi, Jules. Great uh, to see you. How you doing? Jeff is responsible for putting up so many blue plaques, so the chances are if you see a blue plaque somewhere in Tooting, he was responsible for getting it put up. Yeah, I see your friend Tim is with you as well. Who wrote this? Incredible, invincible, a community of all, for all, we are Tooting. So we ran a competition with the local schools where anyone could write down what Tooting meant to them, OK? And this winning entrance was by Edward Mears from Furcroft Primary School. Ah, 968. This is where George Cole, national treasure, star of Minder, oh. born here. Oh, he was born here. George Cole, the hero. Yeah. The hero. I yeah, loved him. Yeah. Oh. And he was brought up in, in the road behind these houses. So he lived here for the first five or six years of his life. Have you put a blue plaque up to George Cole yet? Oh, it's on the list. It's, uh, all right. <laughs> all right, let's carry on okay. then, in that case. <laughs> Sidney Lewis, the youngest British soldier of the First World War, aged 12. He was 12. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, it's, it's mad. I mean, Sydney kind of somehow disappeared in, in the summer of 1915, I think, went over to Wimbledon. Yeah. Uh, pretended it was 19, yeah. signed up, disappeared. The next thing his mum knew, he was fighting the Battle of the Somme. He must have been pretty hard. I mean, he went on to become a policeman. He survived the oh, Somme. I mean, that's no mean feat. My mum wouldn't yeah. even let me go up to the, the news agent to. Are you proud of it? Is it, is it? Where does this stand on your plaque list? Is I, think this one right, I think it's right up there, number one. No, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a good one, that. I like that. Wow, this is a long road. This, this... 1,065 is next door, so this must 1063. be 1,063. Yeah, well, the person who lived in the house behind me is somebody called Peter Barr, who grew daffodils and various other plants on, um, on fields all the way up Garrett Lane here on both sides of it. He was testing out new varieties, turning the daffodil into the nation's most popular flower. He was up in the Pyrenees, he was Spain, Portugal, he was collecting bulbs. Apparently yellow was really an unpopular colour with the Victorians and it was only in the sort of late Victorian age that people like Oscar Wilde uh, rejuvenated it. It's really great in this area, we actually planted some of the historic bulbs a few years ago. So they're all popping up around here. The sad thing is, we're filming this in the summer and this, we need oh, to come yeah, back in the spring. So yeah. the only daffodils we've got loads to up oh. there. <laughs> Just across the road there, that Merca slots, that used to be a wimpy. Do you remember a yeah, wimpy? Anyway, that used to be a wimpy where Mark Bolan, he um, used to flip burgers. He originally went, there's a job centre around the corner there. They said, oh, so what sort of work do you want to do? And he said, oh, well, you know, I want to be a poet. I said, oh, well, I'm sorry, no poets required at the moment, so uh, you can flip burgers at Wimpy. And so he ended up working there. It reminds me of the time when I, when I came out of university with my philosophy degree. So no philosophers required, unfortunately. So uh, toy selling it was for me. <laughs> These days, you probably get Instagrammer required, YouTuber required. <laughs> Influencer. <laughs> yes. So that Sam's Pound store yeah. across the road there, that's where Mark Bolan from T-Rex went to try and get a job. It was the job centre. It used to be a cinema as well. It was actually one of the first. It opened in 1912. You know, hugely exciting time. A lot of people were coming to, to live in this area. They were able to commute into London because of the trams that had just arrived. So it's like a sort of special sort of golden age. And one of the first features there was actually a documentary about icebergs floating off the coast of Canada. 
because it was 1912. Oh, yeah, the year the Titanic sank. The Titanic, And the yeah. year that my mum's house was built. <laughs> I've got a picture of the Titanic being built, actually. Get so away. around that time. Did I show it to you? No, I haven't oh, seen it. Oh, superb. There's my grandfather. No. And there's the Titanic wow. being built in about 1910, 1911, whenever it was. It's great. When you go to Belfast, there's a museum there, Titanic Museum, and it says, got a sign saying, it was OK when it left here. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to say. Hard to say. What did I? I, I swear. I'm, I think I've got. I think I'm probably swearing at. I, am I swearing at you? No, I just had to say. You're Ghanaian. Okay. Ghana He's moving. Yeah. Look, he's alive. I want to say hello to you. Why don't you come? Gordon's alive. Those are gigantic. If you touch them, oh. they're very smooth. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Like, like any snail. Yeah. But they're massive. Are they in this country? No, from Ghana. You oh, from Ghana. Yeah, this is Africa. That's why they. Too. That's why we had to wait so long because he, he was. They, they, they came here on their own. Just it took ages. How do you eat these? You steam it and you can add it to your vegetables or your sauce. But we normally use it in our soups. So it can be palm nut soup or what we call a blue blue yeah. green soup. Some sort of, oh, that looks like a big hand. This is the yam. The yam. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it looks like tough, but it's yeah. yam. So you use it the same way as potatoes. And then we have pona yam, which is very, very popular in London. People use it to make chips. You can mash it or you can boil it. How long have you been here then? 10 years. 10 years? Yeah. It's your own business? That's my own business. Okay, and it's called Sunyani Sunyana Market. Market. Nice one. Georgina, it's lovely to meet you. Thank you Me so too. much. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Music specialists. CJ, yes, sir. how you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Nice to meet yes, you again. Yes. <laughs> it's a great day. How long have you been here then? Well, we've been here this year 50 years. 50 Nin years? Yeah, 1972 my dad opened the shop. Oh, okay. I was yeah. going to say, you look a bit young for Yeah, you know, but I've been here all that time, yeah. <laughs> no grey, nothing. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. We still do a lot of um, stuff from Jamaica, America and even the UK here. Imported yeah. like what, the vinyls? Right? Yeah, vinyls, yeah, a lot of imported vinyls nowadays. Because yeah. what I love about this yeah. is, look, check this out. Look, he's there got cassettes. Go. There you cassettes, go. man. <laughs> check that out. Who would have thought, eh? Smash hits. Yeah, coming, and they work. Always um, coming back, I think, <laughs> yeah. cassettes. Yeah, they've been around for the last few years. They kind of doing all right. Have you got a Walkman, yeah. the old school one? I haven't, you, you know. No, it? I haven't got it. No. <laughs> all right, great one, though. You too. It's a great day. Cheers, man. All right. stone of any town centre is a bingo. I mean, well, that's an amazing yeah, building. Yeah. Look at this. Look, oh, how old I mean, is that? It's 1930 and just wait till you get inside. I mean, this is this is the crown jewels in Tooting. It really is. <laughs> so this yeah. used to be like a main venue. The Beatles played inside yeah. this. And it, wait, it's unbelievable that you can just walk in and uh, there's hardly anybody in it. It's such a massive empty space. It was the uh, Tooting Granada Theatre originally and it, it was the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, Frank Sinatra, the Supremes, Jerry Lewis, everybody came here. Let's get, let's get over. 30, 22, 23, 24, 25, 25. Do these seats ever get used these days? Not really, no. Really? It's just the bingo. And <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah, it's crazy. No, it's amazing to see your reaction actually to this because I kind of take it for granted and kind of assume that everybody knows that this is just it is totally stunning, isn't it? It's a very odd usage yeah, of it, though, yeah, I want to say. Yeah. But at least it's still standing. I mean, I think it was threatened with demolition. It's thanks to the bingo people that it's, it's been kind of preserved. Yeah. So we shouldn't be too disparaging of the bingo. So basically, Roy Orbison was headlining, the Beatles were supporting him, and Jerry and the Pacemakers were three number ones that year. So in 1963. It's amazing. What a gig. Can you imagine being at that gig? Just over the road from here, actually, is the Tooting Library. It's one of the great Edwardian buildings that was kind of built in this area, and it was created by John Hendry Anderson, who's also famous for creating the world-famous Tooting Back Lido. A lovely old ghost sign there, play. What does that say? 
plate. Player's navy cut, so, so there would have been a tobacconist shop. Yeah. This is the coat of arms of Wandsworth Borough Council. Wandsworth Borough Council, yeah. So what does the boat represent, do you know? The boat is the boat that the Vikings, supposedly the original founders of this area, sailed up the Thames and, um, and settled here in, in, in the Wandle. the road there is the Mixed Blessings Bakery and it's another one of your plaques. I mean the bakery came here I think about 40 years ago but before that this was a recording studio. I mean probably the best known greatest reggae recording studio in the world, Studio One in Jamaica but reggae artists referred to this place as Studio Two. Such was its significance and really? um, Sly and Robbie, Dennis Bovell, Black Slate, Aswad. Um, they all recorded yeah. here. Not just the reggae artists, but sort of 70s glam rockers like Mud. You might remember Tiger Feet. Gary Glitter, who I don't know if it's still cool to talk about him, but he used to get his shoes fixed there. That guy at the uh, Con yeah, Con Cost 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 Shoemaker. The guy, he's, he's made those yeah. big platform boots for Gary Glitter. We had that plaque unveiled about a year ago, and we had um, Dennis Bovell. This is where he met a singer with a very high, high voice called Janet Kay. He, he met her for the first time and created this song for her, Silly Games, which, um, which was a huge hit. I made the mistake of doing that at karaoke once. Yeah, yeah. I've been watching you for so long, it's a shame. Oh, baby, play your silly games. And then it goes, hi, oh, silly games. <laughs> really it's high. Okay. Hello. Is it true that Bob Marley wrote his name on the wall in here somewhere? Yeah, yeah. Upstairs. Upstairs. Yeah. So, so, wall, so what happened, there was a wall that was covered up with padding. Yeah. And the builders, because they were knocking down the wall, they took off all the padding and knocked down the wall. When they knocked down the wall, they saw bare signatures on the wall, but they couldn't do nothing because it was rubble in it. So they threw it in the bin and whatever else. Same thing, there was loads of reels. They went as well, and everything just got chucked. If I only knew at that time. Yeah, if I knew because I was doing music as well back then, like when I was young, I was just getting into it. Lamb, beef, chicken, vegetable, we have sea bass and mackerel, a lot of people's never heard of that. No. We have the best jerk chicken patty in England, I don't care what <laughs> anyone has to say. Right, I'll take your word for it. And we do prawn patties hey, as well. Okay. This is real rum. I'm taking that with me, by the way. <laughs> this is this is really strong as well. This is, you have a bit of that. Uh, compliments to the chef. Oh, like that it. is nice. Are you the proprietor? No, no, no. Oh. So, you were calling, I thought that was your mum who came no, in. No, that's my, not my mum, she's an elderly. So the Jamaicans we call mummy, yeah. and the Africans we call auntie. Oh, really? And the same with the, the, the Africans, the men we call uncle, and the men we call daddy. Our pups. Daddy. Our respect, you know? Yeah, that is nice. Yeah, so well, I think it's time to say goodbye to Jeff. Jeff, nice one. Now, if you want to get a tour with Jeff around Tooting, you can just Google him, go to his website, it's Jeff's Tooting Tours. I'll put a thing up on the screen and I'll put links in the, in the description below. But thanks so much. Good luck with your plaque erections. <laughs>the nice this monument look it's actually a monument to mark the position of the old parish pump this would have all been open fields back uh, 200 years ago and uh, there was a different church there back then but there has been a church there for hundreds of years and along the end here if you come up here there's a school these days it's been turned into a mosque but uh, but there's been a school here for hundreds of years out in the fields here and people will probably have to come from the school to go and get their water from the pump over there We're on the corner of Trevelyan and Charlemont Road, and look, Norfolk House. You know, earlier on we were talking about how Daniel Defoe lived in the area. Well, some people say that on the corner of this building, rumour has it, that one of the guys is his man Friday from Robinson Crusoe, and the other one is Robinson Crusoe himself. I don't know if it's true, but it's a nice little story, isn't it? Let's go. Another one of Jeff's plaques here for Albert Hill, who won the 800 metres and the 1500 metres in the 1920 Olympics. Here, number 22 to 24, Trevelyan Road. They say that the Beatles stayed here in 1963 when they were doing their gig. I think it might have been the one where they were performing with Roy Orbison and uh, Jerry and the Pacemakers. Apparently the Beatles were spotted hanging around here quite a lot. Look at that sorry state. Sorry state of a pillar box. Look at it. Look at the state of it.
It's not much to look at, this Longley Road. This is parallel to Trevelyan Road. But this is where a lot of musical stars lived, and it was quite a well-to-do place to live. And the fellas who wrote Let's All Go Down the Strand, uh, they lived live, live down here. And Harry Lauder, who was the first British artist to sell over a million records. Anyway, they all lived down there. But across the road, actually, back on the, on the main um, Tooting High Street, just up here, there's something quite interesting. Number 216, next to Ramish and Co. That used to be, in 1978, Mary Millington Sex Emporium. She had a 50-seat cinema in there to show sort of <laughs> dirty movies and stuff. And she starred in a very famous soft porn film called Come Play With Me. And that is actually in the Guinness Book of Records as being the longest running film in British history. I think it ran for like four years or something in the West End. Anyway, it's quite sad about uh, Mary Millington because she appeared in the great rock and roll swindle. The, with the Sex Pistols, you know, but then unfortunately afterwards she committed suicide. There's a little churchyard just along the way. Used to be Lambeth's finest array of tombstones, epitaphs, trees, flowers, all that jazz, till the wall came along and someone dropped a bomb on the lot. This is uh, Lambeth Cemetery. I don't know if it's the one that David Bowie sings about in um, Please Mr Gravedigger, but if you watched my Charlie Chaplin video, which is one of my favourites, by the way, we, we, we talk about Charles Chaplin Sr., who was Charlie Chaplin's dad, who was a famous music hall performer, but it's really sad because he died very young in his 40s, I think. Anyway, finally managed to track down his grave to an unmarked grave somewhere in here. So I don't know exactly where it is, but it's just some plot. But uh, anyway, it's too far to walk all the way down there because we're knackered now. And the entrance is inconveniently all the way along this road. I'm not going to climb over, not in these trousers. So <laughs> I will cut to yesterday, Jules, to go and have a look inside. Please, Mr. Grave Digger, I wouldn't care if you found a golden locket full of some girl's hair and you put it in your pocket. This area of the cemetery is B3 Cons. I think it means consecrated, probably. Um, and, and it was here that Charlie Chaplin's dad was buried in an unmarked grave. I'm glad I finally made it here. You see, Charlie Chaplin Sr., he, he died quite young as a result of probably alcoholism, really. He used to drink so much because all his fans used to buy him loads of drinks and expect him to drink with them uh, in the music halls because he was, a, he was a big music hall artist uh, when Charlie Chaplin was a kid. Yes, BC Con. So it's somewhere around here. He was there. Oh, you've seen them? Thanks, tell the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. That's a bona fide vintage litter bin. <laughs> Circa 1969 You're obsessed to 1984. <laughs> I made that up. Oh, marvellous. Now look, John Hunter up there was a surgeon at St George's Hospital, which was originally in Hyde Park Corner, just in 1733, just opposite uh, where the Duke of Wellington lived. There's that big place, which is now the Lanesboro, where you can go for have your afternoon tea and stuff. It's really nice in there. But that's where St George's Hospital used to be, and then they moved it to here. But old uh, John Hunter was this Scottish surgeon who had hundreds of specimens he collected from all over the place, like really weird things, like brains of murderers, Siamese twins, he famously has the skeleton of uh, Charles Byrne, the Irish giant. At the Hunterian Museum, if you watch my uh, Lincoln's Inn Fields video, poor old Charles Byrne, he was this giant, he, when he was on his deathbed, he was saying, please, don't, do not give my body to John Hunter. I do not want to appear in his museum. And he actually paid someone to bury him like, at sea in a sealed lead coffin. And so he was put into the sea, but then John Hunter paid someone else even more money to go and retrieve it. So wow. he's ended up there in the museum, oh, poor old Charles Byrne. Terrible, right? Yeah. So he had lots of specimens, or what's plural of specimens? Specimen, specimens? Specimena? Does it, does it go like nomen? Or nomen, nominis, nominee? I don't bloody know. Cheers. cheers, cheers, everybody. This is a lovely pub. What a beautiful pub. 
on the inside, huge. And I love all the original features. Anyway, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the videos and uh, check out my other videos. I've got lots and lots of videos all about London on, on jewelsguides.com where you can also leave a donation, get in touch, all that sort of stuff. And if you'd like a tour with Jeff around Tooting or any of these areas around South London, then get in touch with him, follow the links below. I actually really enjoyed my day here. Yeah, everyone's been superb. So cheers, see you next time, folks. Thank you.